Hello, everybody. This is going to be a wee bit different today. It's just going to be me, myself, and I. Taylor isn't going to be able to make it. She actually had a death in the family, and it was short notice. We didn't get anybody to cover for me because most of them have pre-existing engagements, the ones we could reach. However, I did leave the digital door open in the back so anybody could walk in anytime during this show. They know I need help, so somebody could pop in here. In the meantime, you got good old me, the guy you see all week anyways. So who else is here besides me? I see we had a bunch of comments over here, and I do have your tickers. Oh, we've got Big Money Grips, the underdog. These guys are here often. Thank you, Kashira, a regular Jimmy Jean, Baptist, Baptist. I'm going to stick with Jimmy Jean. No breakfast jokes today. Jimmy, I got your SPZI, JP Energy, but uh, I did not go for your second one simply because I thought we might have a time constraint. You know how that goes. Uh, who else we got? Oh, Belmore, you got in here, hon. I don't know if we're going to get to Zerify. I know they just had news here recently. Jerome. In at the last minute. Good to have you, Jerome. All right. So this is going to be, as I said, a little bit different than I'm normally doing. So I've not got a habit of what, what I do here. I won't get breaks, second takes. So I've got most of your stocks all lined up. I'm going to flip over to my second screen and I'm going to do all the charting now. I do like to have other people chart for you because I think you can learn a lot from watching other people chart. And every single person does it differently. All of them. It's like spaghetti. I mean, everybody uses basically the same ingredients, but how come they all taste different unless they're buying them from the jar? Today, you're getting the jar. But you know it's good, right? So let's jump on into this, folks. Bring up my share screen here. I'm going to blind you for a second, and I will get out of here as fast as I can. Ow, I hate that. Let's make sure. Um, oh, I think I lost my page over here just so I can make sure. There you are. You can see me. We are good to go. Let's start this with the very first ticker I was given. I'm not going to be able to look at your comments, most likely. I want to cover as many stocks as I can. I do have a second screen over here, so I can see your comments. But if I don't respond to you, I definitely can't type to you. That's what Taylor does. All right, let's jump on into this. First one we are looking at is APCX AppTech Payments Core. I do believe this was a request off of Google or Twitter or something like that. I've got a couple of those mixed in here today. So this is AppTech Payments. She finished today at $1.57, about 6.5% drop. She's on the major exchange. I love these penny stocks in a major exchange, folks. They're free to trade. There's no transaction fees. You can trade them pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC. Yeah, you may see them being traded, but not by me and you. It's by brokers and marketers. I hate that. If anybody gets to trade, we should all get to trade. Um, I don't know why this is over here. I'm normally, normally not seeing green tick marks underneath a major exchange stock, but they're gr good green ticks. So I'm going to start off with the news I have found. I've already done some homework here. I've got things laid out so I don't get it mixed up. We'll look at that, and then we'll go back and look at the basic information real quickly. So what I've got here, um, AppTex Payment Core is a pioneering fintech financial technology company powering frictionless, frictionless commerce between business to business and business to consumer. Now, we're going to be looking at a lot of fintech companies. I noticed that. The difference between each fintech company, I mean, I know they got differences in their programming and stuff, but they're doing fintech services in the financial arena. It's their clientele. There's lots of different clientele, whether you're working with advertisers, bankers, miners, I mean, whatever. There's lots of different clientele and the different clientele can make all the difference in the world. So this was a piece of news that came out October 27th. The company announced that they had partnered with FinZero, a software development company centered around the movement of money na nationally and globally. The whole purpose to getting with Fizz is that their API enables AppTech to optimize integration with software providers and independent software vendors. It just makes their program easier to merge into whatever anybody else is using, and that's going to open up the market for them big. 
See what else we got here. Taking a look at the news. Aptech Payments Corp completes acquisition of FinZero. That was on the 27th. Aptech engages Core IR for investor relations and shareholder communication. That's always a good thing. They're going to keep in touch with their shareholders righteously. They've got a group to actually make sure it gets done. And then a piece of news that came out uh, two days ago. The company successfully boards its first international airport, Ontario. It's newly acquired FinZero platform. Now, I did want to take a look at this piece of news. They tell us that the Reno International Airport is the first of an estimated 40 airports being boarded into the FinZero platform during 2024. In total, there are over 400 airports that Aptech will look to board over the coming years. FinZero platform manages all the financial transaction and payments within the airport's facilities. There's a lot of big money there, folks. The company anticipates additional airports to be fully adopted to the platform in the coming weeks. So they've got a big highway in front of them and they're picking up speed right now. So let's get some general information. Relative volume for the company. She's up. We've gone from 86,000 to 102,000. Share structure for the company. Not bad. 22 million outstanding. That's everything on the market. Insiders got about one third of it, about seven and a half million. We got 14 and a half million. That's not a bad float at all. Financials for the company. Well, they're growing, not real fast, but they're growing year over year, starting here at 256,000. Got to remember there's three zeros up there to add to these numbers. And they ended the year of 2022 at 450,000. And they got to keep virtually half of that. Quarterly. Yeah, their revenues are growing and they're still making money. So everything looks good. They've got about a quarter million in the bank, 2.4 in assets, 1.6 in liabilities. So though it's not much, we're not in deficit here. We've got $816,000 in equity. Um, I don't think we had. All right. There, there was something here. Let me see. I brought up some notes here. Not on this one. These are form fours. I think these have a different letter, A. These are form fours that are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company stock. And they can get them and lose them in a lot of different ways. But we want to know when they buy them or sell them. Well, it's a P. You'll see it right there. The code, P for purchase, S for sale. Any other letter, it's really not going to affect us. So all of these form fours here go to the same thing. They are something else. I don't know what. All right, I do believe that covers everything here. So let's jump on over to that chart. It worked. All right, I got the right button set up here, but I don't have the right ticker up. <laughs> let's get the right ticker. APCX. Make sure I do this right because I can do it 20 times and have it wrong. I swear to God. So we are looking at a four-hour, six-month chart. Always want to start off with the big picture. See the trend. See where she's going overall. If you're following behind a car in the city, you have no idea where they're going. But you look at where they've been over the last 24 hours, you get a general idea of where they're heading. So what we've got here is a six-month, four-hour view. We had a big rip back here in August. She jumped from about a buck eighty up to four dollars and eighty-four cents. That's about a hundred and fifty more than that gains right there. Came back down and she hit a low here of a dollar fourteen. She did that at the almost the end of December. And off of that, she is bouncing hard. Now, I would like to say she's having a trend change right now. But as you can see, we've got a channel here. She's been falling down in this channel and she's still inside it. So legitimately, you can't say she's broke out until she gets out of that channel. But boy, is she getting close, right? Our volume, it is starting to pick up. You can see it's growing little by little. She has broken out over all the strong SMAs, got very close to that 200 and the top of the channel. And she's come back down here to the center of the channel, which is where our 50-day SMA is right now. And she's bouncing there, which is a nice strong support between the halfway mark and the 50. Oscillators are a bit tempered right now. There's not a lot of heat in them. Not bad, though. They're not falling fast or anything. On our one-hour chart, you can see she was falling. She hit a low here, and it does look like a change of trend. She did go from $1.14 to $2.30 here. 
<laughs> You're looking at a hundred percent run there in those seven days. She's come down. Here's our 200 falling hard and fast, came right down to the channel and has turned up now and is cutting out of the channel. And she is bouncing on that 200 right now off of the middle part of this channel. Looks like she has a chance of picking up and running. Again, the oscillators aren't showing a whole lot of heat. They're pretty cool right now, although our RSI is trying to pick up the momentum. Five day, five minute. Well, she was climbing real strong here. You can see our 200 was climbing up until yesterday when she planed out, she got flat. And as I tell you, it's an opportunity for the stocks to break out when they're underneath that 200 to get up on top. When they finally are flat, well, it kind of works the same way in the opposite. If you're going up, 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 and then it starts to get flat, it's weak. And this is a point where it can fall. And she's come all the way down here to $1.49. She's come up on this strong support here, which is at $1.55. And she's working off of that right now. Oscillators, finally, they are showing some heat. All of them are starting to recover and starting to pull up right now. Overall, she does look strong. She is at that breakout point on that four-hour chart of coming out. You can see she's hit at once. She's come down to the center here. I would expect her to stay in the center like she was up here and probably start to push off because the 200 is so close. All right, let's jump on into that next stock. See what we got here. This is not that one. That one. No, we just looked at that one. <laughs> Give me a moment. I'm getting there. AQST, Aquesta Therapeutics. Another penny stock on the major exchange comes with the same benefits. We're at $2.32 at the end of the day, 6.8% gains. So let's start off with what's going on. Let's take a look at the news. That's always a good way to catch up. I'm back here to November 2nd. They completed a $45 million debt refinancing. They didn't pay it off but it's not looming over their heads anymore. They've got some room to breathe. That's what most of us Americans need. Just room to breathe from the debt we're carrying. On the seventh, they had an earning call. Is that the one I wanted to cover there? Or was it the earning results? I'm sure it was the earning results. It was. Yeah, so forget this one. Wrong highlight. We're going to look at the earning results because they only go up to September. And I think these are annual results, actually. And then we've got a big piece of news that came out at the beginning of December. The company doses their first patient in phase three pivotal clinical study evaluating their drug called Anaflim. It is a sublingual film. Uh, that is a piece of plastic that you just put in your mouth and <whistles> dissolves away. No swallowing pills, nothing. Just very simple, pre-dosed. So we got two pieces of news here I do want to look at. The uh, financial results. They tell us they completed debt refinancing, resulting in approximately $28 million worth of cash savings to 2025. So not only do they have space now between that debt that was looming over their head, but they're saving money because of the terms they've now gotten, $25 million up till 2025. Reported 25% year-over-year growth, year-to-year -year date revenue, they're growing, and raises their full-year 2023 revenue guidance from 47 to 50 million. That's their projections, what they think they're going to make. Now, we don't know what they've done yet. We're going to take a look at that here in just a minute. The other piece of news about their first dosing. They tell us that they are commencing their initial phase three study with the first oil, orally delivered drug, and it is a pro drug. Now, this is what I like to see. Pro drugs are drugs that have no side effects. The drug does what it's supposed to do, and that's it. And normally, whatever is left over of the drug is disposed of one way or another. It's gotten rid of out of the body. They also reaffirmed top-line data anticipated in the first quarter of 2024, where we are right now, these first three months. So what is this drug? Anaflim is the company's orally administered a pain-freeing pro-drug product candidate under the development for the treatment of severe life-threatening allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. So there you go. That's what their drug does. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Nice jump, almost 100%. 
going from 536,000 shares to just over a million. Share structure for the company, not bad. We're at 66 million, everything on the market. Don't know what the float is, but it's never higher than the outstanding share count. So it's not going to be more than that. And it really could be significantly less. Dive around Google using the ticker and the company name, put in the word float, outstanding. Just find the ones that agree the most. That's probably what it is. Market cap for the company, we are at 139 million, closing in on 140. Financials, they making any money? Yes, they are. They're hovering around 50 million for the last four years, bringing home about 50% of that, if not more, for profit. Quarterlies, yeah, they're growing. They were back at 11, 10 a couple years ago. Now they're up at 13 million. And look, the profits are growing. Their profit margin has increased. They did 13.2 in June and did 6.6 .6 million. They did less this last quarter and brought home just almost 2 million extra in profit. That's good. Balance sheet for the company. Got lots of money in the bank, about $25 million. Six mi oh, I forgot. I can't highlight things. That makes it go black for you. 60 million here for assets, 162 million in liabilities. Ouch. So that gives us 102 million in deficit. So honestly, the price of the stock is negative. You got to look at other assets. It's not just about what they actually own. It's who they are, what they're doing, what their future looks like, because that's a big number to be underneath. Let's see if we have any more disclosures. I'm sure I've already scanned these. Uh, yeah, that's the whole point of coming here. So I don't have to waste your time jumping into these. Yes, 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 yes. So let's go take a look at the uh, chart for AQST Acrestive. Copy that bad boy so I don't type it wrong 13 times. <laughs> so Acrestive, six month, four hour chart. We have got a high here of $2.69. She just hit it here again, pretty much. That was at uh, the start of December. She's been going sideways the hard way. I mean, really, she had a nice big rip here. She's been going up and down, and she's pretty much just right here. She has been in an up channel since October. She broke out of the 200 on her four-hour chart a long time ago, and I mean, she ripped. Once she got over that 200, she was at a buck 60. She went up here to 267. Got outside of this channel, came back down. You can see she is bouncing off of the bottom of this channel right now. She's stuck in the lower quadrant, lower half. Yeah, not quadrant, half. And if she can get above this middle point, then she'll probably bounce around in the upper half, working her way up to the top in breakout. Oscillators, they're showing strength, actually. Every single one of them is pushing up and climbing. And our RSI has just reached the overbought. Now, I know I hear a lot of people say, well, it's probably going to fall then. If it's in the overbought, it's oversold. So it has to pull back. Well, that's true imminently, but I mean, not at the very moment. She could go to 80. She could go to 90. We have no idea. And everything right now is crossing the strong SMAs and pushing up. She looks good to me. Let's take a look at that 20-day, one-hour view. All right, so off of the low bubble, she had a, a drop here, big drop from 253 down to 184, and slowly she's working her way over. But you can see once she got over that 200, folks, she started to pick up momentum. She is now, this channel I drew, I drew it on the four hour chart. And the way it looks on a four hour chart is not the way it's going to look on the five minute chart. If you want it to look better, draw it on the five minute chart. So right now, it looks like we are right here at the breakout point of the center, which she could be right there. Volume has been strong today, and still, all of our oscillators are very strong, and we are right underneath the oversold, which I love, folks. I don't care what anybody says. Give me red. Five-day, five-minute, riding on our 200-day SMA. We had a drop down, but she came right back up to where she's always been sitting, and here she finally bounced. That was our final bounce there off of the 200. And she launched herself. She didn't go to the 50 or the 20. She went straight to the nine. Came down, did a rubber ball bounce on the 50. You know, rubber ball with air in it. Goes under the water and immediately comes out and shoots up. It doesn't just land on the top. 
this shot up and it just kept going, hitting a high at the end of the day of $2.26. The charts SMAs are looking good. The oscillators are looking outstanding. Every single one of them is pushing up. You can't go wrong if all of your oscillators are climbing, plain and simple. And that is our five minute. So this is looking really good right now. She looks like she has heat. She ended the day on a high note. Just out of curiosity, did she pull down off that low bubble, that high bubble? Nope. Look at that. After market, she pushed right up to it. Now, she may have pulled back right down to here, which would be a real quick pullback in less than a minute, and then bouncing back up. Normally, when you see a high bubble, you can expect eight out of 10 times for there to be a pullback, not a fall back. Just you bumped your head and you pull back just a little. Look up and then you continue on. And this was quick. So that's looking good to me, folks. I like AQST's chart. Next. Yes, you can still see me. All right, let's make this smooth this time. Raker. This is R-A-K-R, Rainmaker Worldwide. And let's see if I can find out who gave me Rainmaker. This is, no, it's not Kashira, the underdog. How many of you remember, there's no need to fear, underdog is here. Those are really the bland, old-fashioned cartoons. It was in color, though. So Rainmaker Worldwide finished the day at 003, fell a lot about 12%. She's on the pink tier. She is current. She's got a transfer agent verified. That's validated information. You don't get any on a pink. So we like to see these green ticks. We're missing our verified profile. Not a deal breaker, but it's reassuring seeing it there. Independent directors. You got to have independent directors if you're going to uplist. I don't care if it's to the QB or the NASDAQ. You got to have independent directors. And you got to list them over here when you plan on uplisting. So it looks like they've got plans on uplisting. Now, I mean serious plans. Everybody says they're going to uplist because that's what investors want to hear. But you want to see filings. You want to see listings like this. That shows sincerity. So what is this company all about? They work with water technology. They tell us here that they work around the world deploying two types of energy efficient fresh water technologies, basically grabbing water out of the air, just right out of the humidity of the air. The other way is by taking salt water, ocean water or polluted water and turning it into fresh water. And they're doing this in areas where they really need the water. I don't mean the west of America. I mean like the west of Africa or something like that. So what did I learn about this company? Well, let's start with the news, right? Well, here they tell us they are planning on uplisting to the QB. It's not to the NASDAQ. They told us this back in March of this year. It hasn't happened yet, right? How long does it take to uplist? Then in August, they announced a joint development agreement with Miranda Water Treatment Systems, which is the short version of their name. God, their name is too big. And that's pretty much what all the rest of this news is really about. Them trying to get this deal done. And on uh, March 23rd, yeah, for God's sake, that was March of uh, 2022 back here. I overlooked that. So that was over a year and a half ago they said they were going to uplist. They better get to it. This is March of 2023. Memorandum of Understanding with Miranda. And let's see, was there anything else here? Yeah, this is a piece of news I found. Why the news is over there. June 8th, 2023. They said the company entered into the joint development agreement with Miranda Environment and Water Treatment Technologies, Energy, Natural Resources, Engineering, Consulting, Construction, and Commerce, Inc. What a name. It's overkill. Um, this is the first joint development project and is now in process with an order received from a resort developer in the Turks and the Caicos. And they've got some more information here, but that's really all they've told us. We don't have anything more recent than that. What I did find was their most recent uh, financials. They're making revenues now, which is a big thing. I don't think it even shows up over here. Any financials here? We got nothing on the annual. Ta-da! Nothing on the quarterly. So if you didn't go into the financials, you would think they weren't making any money. And this is a big deal. 
excuse me. <laughs> this is a big deal. They made uh, $79,000. Now, it's not a lot of money, but it's first money on the books. And that's the big deal. It's like a farmer just seeing that little green and he has a green single line going down every row. This man has a party that night. That's all he wanted to see was a start. That's the beginning of success. This is looking good. So let's get some regular old information on the company now. Relative volume. Oops, she dropped today from 8.5 million down to 5.7 million. Share structure. Wow. Look at that, folks. Now, this is a bit scary to me. Authorized share count. They've got 500 million. How many do they have already on the market? 499,682,113. I'm not going to do the quick math there, but they ain't got very many shares left, folks. They've got less. They got just over 300,000 shares. So why is that a big deal? Well, not that I'm happy about this, but if the company needs to generate some revenue, some money for them to work with, they do that by putting shares on the market, a public offering. They don't have any. First thing I would expect is they're going to ask, they're going to have a shareholder meeting and ask to increase their authorized share count. Or worse yet, they could do a reverse stock split just to bring the shares back home. Wouldn't even have anything to do with lifting the price unless they were going to time a reverse stock split with an uplisting. To get to the QB, that's where they want to go. The QB, you have to have a minimum price of one penny. So right now we are one, oh no, we're further down than arrow. No, no, we're one third down. So they could do a one and three, one and four and get just over a penny. But who wants to be on the edge of the ledge? You know, so you may take it to a dime. So they may do a one and 30 reverse split. They could do that, bring home shares, which would help them and put them onto the QB if they've got everything in place. And I do see they've got independent directors listed here. They've got about a hundred million of those, we get the rest 400 million. Let's take a look at their uh, financials. What sort of money they making? Oh, we've already done that, right? Sure we did. And I've already gone through these. And if I had found anything, I'd have shared it with you. So let's go take a look at that chart for Raker. So you missing Taylor? I am. Gives me a chance to drink my coffee, <laughs> smoke my vape. All right, let's put this in here. How much time we used already? 28 minutes. Well, we're flying. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's pull this back to the four-hour view. I want to get that big picture. We've been here before. You see that blue line? That tells me when we were here last. That was October 10th. We looked at it when she was somewhere around uh, 0025. After we looked at her, she did hit a high here just a couple days later of 0035. So you're looking at about a 30% run there before she came hard down. I mean, way down here to the 200. This is what you want to see, controlled falls. She came down. She's banged on it a few times, had another serious rip going across the high that we had way back here. Now, I like this, folks. This is what I like to think of as a precursor to a breakout. When you see a big old jump go through the 200 and then come back down, but only come back down to where she was, not tumble further down, just where she was. That to me is a token sign. Why? Because this has a little string attached to it, that high up there to every single SMA. The higher that price goes, the more it tugs the SMAs. The nine day moves very quickly. The 20 day takes a little time to move, but not much. The 50 moves a little slower and the 200 needs a few days normally. So the higher that goes, the more chance she's creating for herself to break out. Well, she got under it, hug it, right? And look, right here, she is flat. No doubt about that. And when did she break out? Right there, when she was totally flat. Came down onto this new support, the new step she created, she did fall through it, came back to it. That's why it was built there, has fallen down under it again. And now she has not only come onto this one, she's broke the next one. And you can see our little red bar there. She is fighting this one. So we could expect some volatility around this resistance right here at 0031. All of our SMAs are looking good. They're all over the 200 now. 
Our 20 has just crossed the 200 hall. You want to get the smallest SMAs on the top, the biggest on the bottom. When they're all in the right order, you get smooth growth. Oscillators. We had a lot of growth. Everything is going sideways right now, except our RSI. She has taken a dip, but she's not in any danger zone. She's clear up there at 66. Looking at our one hour, 20 day view. So she dipped here. She was underneath every single SMA at 0012. She came up right here when she got over the 50 and what? The 50 is flat. You see this, folks. This is what I want to get to you over and over. It's not a 100% thing, but how often do we see it? The 50 is completely flat. She gave a few indicators here that she wanted to get over it. Once it went flat, she not only shot through the 50, she shot through the 200 and put a huge wick up there. That says that's where I'm going to go. To me, that is an indicator. When you see something go up and come back down to its homeland, just wait, wait for it to break out. It may be a couple of days and look what happened. She's off and flying. She's on her nine day SMA and this is beautiful. There's our 20, our 50, our 200 haul, which does belong on top of our 200 day SMA. The 200 haul is just like your 200 day SMA, except it puts more credence on current prices. So what you get is a second long-term line that penny stocks really appreciate right now. I've been pointing this out a lot in my videos. So if you haven't got it, it's the hall, H-U-L-L, 200 hall. Oscillators, they're cooling off a little bit. I would anticipate for this to be going sideways, best circumstance, waiting for these strong SMAs to come up. She may bypass when the 20 hits her and wait for the 50, but I think she's probably going to try to push up. RSI, it is at 55, the absolute lowest. I want to see it. Five day, five minute. That's not a bad chart, right? There's our 200. <laughs> if you watch my video, you know my videos. You know, I tell you, when a new SMA comes on the board, you can expect the price to normally, eight out of 10 times, gravitate to it. I don't care if it's above the price or below the price. Well, look, there's a perfect example. She's minding her own business, floating over everything, right? She's above everything. Here comes the 200. You got to pay homage. It's the new king on the block, but you don't have to stick around. You get down there and you tag team it like, you know, wrestling, hit it, and you're off and running. So this was perfect. Now I know it's out of the way. If she kept climbing, I would expect her to come down and do that. It's done. She got back up to her 50, and man, is she paying heed to that 50? Is she not? Now it is going sideways right now. Problem is that 200-day haul up on top. You can see she's tapping it. They respect the 200 haul. But what do we see here? She's breaking through it. Now, she was actually breaking down out of it, to be honest. She's come down, and honestly, she's looking like she's tumbling right now. And We're on the five-minute. Let, let me back up to, say, the 15-minute. There you go. She was like in the air. The price is never really in the air. If you look from one chart to the next, four hour, one hour, 10 minute, 15 minute, five minute, somewhere there's an SMA she's sitting on. There you go. She is on the 50 on our 15 minute chart. You can see she's bounced on it many a times. So where she's sitting now is not an accident. This is the one she is watching. Who's watching? The investors. That's why it's getting so much attention because investors are watching it and this is what they're bidding on right now. So this isn't looking bad. Let, let me get a fresh look at that four hour. Yeah, okay. She is breaking this high here. Let me go back one year just so we see what our 52 week high was. That's the one hour. Try again. We are at 008 as our 52 week high. So we've got a 150% run that, that we could get here. Absolutely. If she was to go to that point, the next one, really, this is the one I would be looking for. That one right there. Not that one. <laughs> get the right tool and you get the right response right there. Underneath here, 
And this one tagging right there, we don't have anything else. She's in the air high here. But this is the one I anticipate she's running towards right now. She could be hitting 5-2, double zero five two next. I expect her to be pushing, and the charts look good for that. She is going to bounce. Don't expect it to be a solid run. You're going to get ups and downs, but the oscillators are all pushing up right now. All right, take a breath. Take a drink. Okay with you? <laughs> Nobody's jumped in here, huh? Is this the first time we've done this alone? I think it is. Isn't going bad. I'm used to doing videos alone, but these live versions, I'm used to having another voice echo behind me somewhere. So let's take a look now at Meagle. Oh, yes, Meagle. <laughs> I think of that guy. Oh, my precious, my precious. <laughs> Meagle was a Chinese stock that came onto the market oh, maybe a year and a half ago, something like that. There were a lot of these Chinese stocks coming onto the market, IPOing with super low floats. I mean, super low OSs, outstanding share counts, like 3 million, 5 million, 6 million, and that's it. Not even any warrants. Warrants are going to dilute it sometime in the future. They didn't even have any warrants. So all you had trading was 5 million shares. That's it. And this company was one of them that IPO'd. And I don't know how many days it took. I don't know if it was a week or two weeks or two days, but she went up over 200 bucks. There was another Chinese company, HKD. Uh, I'm not sure. They did the same thing just before this company did. I think they had 3 million shares. And if I remember correct, I think they hit $1,500. <laughs> yes, they did. And I'm not talking one pop. I'm talking about a climb up to there. There was plenty of opportunities to take gains. And this stock did that too. She wasn't just up there for a quick poke. She was up there for a little while. So Meagle finished the day to day at $1.36. And she had just over 7% gains. Another penny stock on the major exchange. So what does Magic Empire Global do? I did take some notes here. Let me get a head rush here. Yes. Okay. All right. So Magic Empire, uh, this is a financial service provider in Hong Kong, which principally engages in the provision of corporate finance advisory services and underwriting services. And who do they work with? They're not telling us who they work with here. I always like to know who their clients are. Let's see what I dug up on them. Okay. We'll look at this first. I think we're not looking at the news because they really don't have any news. Uh, let's see here. News. Yeah, this, and even if they did, I couldn't read it. It's Seeking Alpha. I've been using sites for so long over the last five years that most of them block me now. Bloomberg, Wall Street, Bazinga, uh, Alpha, Seeking Alpha. They all want me to pay. I won't pay. I'll find my information somewhere else. So jumping back to those disclosures, we got a 6K here. Now, what was that 6K about? Do you believe this was them putting more shares on the market? Yes. And th this is important. Um, they did start off at the low float. I think we're at roughly 20 million now. We'll see in just a minute. But they tell us here that they have had a memorandum of articles changed. It wasn't a shareholder vote. It was something else. And I'm not familiar in and out with all of this stuff, but they are looking to put up to a maximum of 300 million more shares on the market. Now, if they've got 20 million in there right now, which is what I do believe they have, let's take a look. Yeah, 20.2 million. I don't know what the float is. So they want to put 300 million. That is, oh my God. Well, 100% dilution is going to 40, right? So <laughs> I think you're looking at a thousand, a thousand percent dilution. So you're really kicking the hell out of the shareholder value. And they didn't say they were going to do it all at once. It's just that they have the right to do it. And normally there's a time limit. It's normally uh, 12 months. And the other two pieces of... Uh, filings here. We had two big investors that came in in October, big investors. One bought 24% of the company and one bought 34% of the company. That's 58% of the company. 
Sounds like a change of control might be somewhere around the corner here. Anything else I got here? Uh, no. So let's see what the relative volume was for the company. Well, that's a nice increase. Yes, she's jumped about three times, going from 350000 to just over $1 million. We've already seen the share structure. Is the company making any money? They are, but they're not doing well. They've dropped over the last three years down to $1.4 million. The neat thing about their business, it's not digital, it's advisory. They just advise people and that's how they get paid. So they don't have to pay anything to talk. <laughs> they get to keep every penny. Quarterly, eh, we ain't getting nothing here. Let's see what we have on the balance sheet. They got about 15 million in the bank, 18 million in assets and got no liabilities. Again, what sort of liabilities? I mean, maybe you get mouth insurance. If you get a sore throat, you get an insurance payment. Liabilities are just about a million. So we end up with 17.4 million in stockholder equity. And I do believe that covers everything over here, right? Yes, it does. Right? Thank you. So let's go take a look at the charts. I'm going to copy this so I don't type it wrong. All right. So you think I'm kidding about the high. Let's go see. Let's go back three years. There you go. $2.49 is what she hit, folks. She hit, uh, let me see. Now, we are looking at a three-year, one-week chart. So each one of these bars covers seven days, maybe five days. I don't know what their week. Well, I'm sure, yeah, Saturday and Sunday's in there. In either case, that first week, she hit a high of 234. The second week, she hit a high of 249. And she was sticking up there at almost $100 all those first two weeks. So there was plenty of opportunity to take your gains. If you got burned here, you were just being greedy. Sorry. Or you were in the hospital or in a coma. Could have been that. So we did have a huge fall down to 72 cents, which she hit in October, the very end of October. Jump on down to that six month Six months ago, we had a rip here. I don't see a reverse split. I don't think they've ever done that. They've been throwing shares on the market. So we did have a nice rip here. It is a climb. Boo -doo 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 -doo. And I have no idea why she did this. She went from, uh, looks like about 90 cents up to six bucks. So you're looking at over 600% gains we got there. That is sweet. And I don't know why. Then we've got a whole bunch of resistances here that I have drawn. And she has been breaking through a bunch of them, folks. Here in the last four days, she has gone wild. Now look, she is on a downtrend. This is what I call an atypical breakout chart. When your price is deep underneath the 200, falling pretty much parallel to it. Then you look for a change. Does the price do something to aggravate the 200? Poke, poke. Now we see that she's probably going to get close like your kid's sister. If it pokes you once, it's going to poke you again. So it got real close to the 200. It's just laying up near it. Poke, poke. And then here, I'm not sure if there was a catalyst or not, but she took off. This is where she went from 90 cents up to $1.75. Virtually 100% gain before she came back down to the nine-day SMA. Now, folks, I've got a habit. I've just learned this. When you're dealing with these stocks that rip real quick, if she is running, you're at 50% gains. Now, you don't have to do this with everything you own. You don't have to sell everything. It's not a buy all, sell all. You can buy a little, sell a little. It's called scaling in and scaling out. Take some profits and lessen your risk. When this gets up to 50%, get ready to start selling something. Take 50% and get ready to sell. When you see it start moving fast, 60, 70, start putting in an order. Sell it. But you say, why? It's climbing. But you don't know where the ceiling is. You don't have any idea. And when you put in your order, it's taking a few seconds to put it in. You saw it at 75% when you decided to sell. When you finally hit the button, look, we're at 86%. It was still climbing as you were selling. Then it goes up to 101 and you say, bad advice, John. Bad advice. I lost money. Really? Chances are you wouldn't have sold at that dollar one. 
she'd have started falling and then you'd have decided to sell thinking I can get out at 90. As you're taking those few seconds to put your order in, what's happening? 90, 80, she's falling faster than she was climbing and you get out at 62%. You could have had 81 if you'd have sold on the way up instead of coming the way down. And that's if you can catch the price. Now, the neat thing is with the uh, NASDAQ stocks, you can get in with market orders. You can get out with market orders. In case you didn't know this, OTC stocks, you cannot get in on a market order. You can't just say, whatever the price is, I'll pay it. Nope. You have to pick a price. They make it hard. It's like lassoing a cow. You got to put it over its head. Doesn't count any other way. So she took a nice rip here. She came down to that nine and she is now stair stepping away through these resistances. We've got one she's at right now at $1.35 and she's at $1.36. She's standing on top of it. Next one here is $1.48, $1.58 and $1.74. Volume is still here. It was stronger four days ago, but it's here. That's a lot more than we've had over the last 20 or so days. Oscillators. Everything is climbing nice and even and steady. And I like that. Surges are fun to play, but they can be a bit desperate, a bit nerve wracking. I like steady growth. So this is looking sweet. Our RSI has had a pullback. Though you can't see it here. You do see she jumped and she's come back down. Looking at our one hour, 20 day. It looks just like the other one, except it's sweet, right? Look at these SMAs. Look how even and flat they are. They're not even fighting. She's just floating above all of this stuff. It is sweet climb. She's rolling around a little bit, but nothing looks dangerous. Our 200, which was flat for a very long time, which is unusual. I hate seeing this. If a price doesn't try to break out when that 200 gets flat, what's wrong? something's wrong. So there was something wrong for a long time here, but now finally our 200 is climbing. It's looking good. Oscillators, they're a little bit cool on the edges, but overall they've been climbing. RSI is taking a bit of a dip right now because she was falling at the back half of the day. So we had a nice rip here. Who that was a nice rip at the end of the day. She was here at 97 cents and went to that $1.75 after market. And we are looking at a NASDAQ stock. So you can trade these folks. You don't need any special permissions. You don't have to get qualified. All you got to do is trade. One thing you got to remember though, change the period that your order is for. It's not a day trade. That's in there by default. So you get an order in and you're right. You've got it on the money. You're successful. No, you're not. Not if you didn't put extension or maybe after hours. I don't know what yours says, but you got to get it in that order as the right time period or it won't even see your order. So we had that nice rip and she came down by the next day, breaking through the 200 and she took off again. And she was just going sideways, gaining her bearings. That's what you normally see after a big run up or a big run down, a fall. You normally see a lot of this getting settled again. And once you get your bearings, you do whatever it is you want to do. Looks like she wants to climb. 200-day SMA is climbing on her five-minute as well. Oscillators, not excited. They're looking bad. My PPO is coming down. That's my percentage price oscillator. And underneath it, I have my ADX trend continuation. It's coming up. Whenever I see these two coming together, I know for fact, 100%, the price is falling. And I'm expecting this to come down to the 200 and most likely under it because that's what she does. She comes under it, but she does these rubber ball bounces. So when you see her start to come back up, that might be a good buy-in point, even though she's under the 200, because this is her habit. All right. I think that's about enough for Meagle. I don't think she's going to be going to $200 anytime soon, but <laughs> I didn't think she was going to do it the first day. What do we got? We got any stocks left? Of course we do. What time is it? We got 10 minutes here. We're not doing too bad. We have got iQuest now. Thank you, Kishira, for Migo. I do appreciate that one. This comes from, uh, oh, this was a request that came from somewhere else. Uh, I can't remember where, but I did throw it in here. Voice is getting a bit scratchy now. So this is iQuest. I-Q-S-T, iQuestal, Inc., Finished today at 16 cents, dropped almost 5% today. 
She's on the best tier of the OTC, the QX. This tier, it's as close as you get to the major exchange. I mean that literally with information, with riskiness. They give us all the filings that you would have to give us if you were on the major exchange. So they are the most transparent. And they've got every green tick you could hope for over here, including penny stock exempt. They're 16 cents. They're on the OTC. They are not a penny stock. You look it up, it's not going to be there. Penny stocks are risky. Penny stock exempt means they've proven they're not risky. By being in business for three to five years, having millions of dollars in assets or revenues and keeping up with their financial filings. They're doing everything an adult should be doing. So the company looks really good. So what is iQuesto about? Well, there's a lot of words here. We're trying to narrow it down. They tell us here that iQuesto has four business divisions. And though I do have them listed here, I found a better description, which gives us more information about the company. They've got four divisions. One is the telecom division, which represents the majority of their current operations, which is their, where they're getting most of their money from right now, which also represents the source for all the company's revenues. They're offering voice over internet. That's called VoIP, voice over internet protocol, SMS, proprietary internet of things solutions, and international fiber optic connectivity through their subsidiaries. And they've got a long list here of all these different subsidiaries. The company is also working in the fintech business, offering complete fintech ecosystem, MasterCard debit card, and a U.S. bank account that goes with their mobile app in their wallet. This is for the unbanked. This gets you a credit card. It's a debit card, but it's got the MasterCard logo on it. It gets you a bank account. It gets you into the system so you can digitally start doing business in the world again. The company is also developing a blockchain platform business line, offering a proprietary mobile number portability application. I have no clue. Some more DD on that one. And then what I knew the company for years ago, the company is developing electric vehicle business line. They are working on electric motorcycles for USA, Spain, Portugal, Panama, Colombia, and Venezuela. And EVOS, I believe that's one of their subsidiaries, is also working on a development of an EV mid-speed car to serve the niche of the second car in the family. A mid-speed car. I'd have to look that up. I'd be curious to see what it's about. Now, the last thing I remember about iQuesto, I haven't been following them, but there was a company called, uh, oh, God, I can't remember the name of it right now. They were building these electric motorcycles. It was a two-seater. It was supposed to be the Bodhi Bodhi for South Africa, which is a taxi. It's a sidecar, that World War II motorcycle that you see Steve McQueen in. That's what they were building, that exact one, a duplicate. Well, this company backed them up. Back then, they merged together to build this electric motorcycle. Well, that company started telling us they were now doing this and doing that, and the motorcycle they did show us was smoking as it was going down the alley when he showed it to us. So at that point, I did lose a little bit of respect for iQuesto, but it seems to me not only has iQuesto abandoned them, but it looks like they're gone as well. Whoever they were, I can't remember. I'm sure one of you know who I'm talking about. All right, so now that we know what the company does, was there anything else we needed to know? Yeah, their annual revenues, you can see here for the end of 2023 exceeds $120 million. 2022, they did 93 million. And as you can see, every year they have been growing nicely, going from 18 million to 44 to 64 to 93 to now over 120. So we can't complain about that. Balance sheet. Well, they don't have much of it in the bank. Hopefully they're using it. Cash flow. They're investing it and making more money with their money. Cash in the bank, 1.3 million. Total assets, 12.5 million. Yeah. Less liabilities, 5.7. That gives us stockholder equity of 6.7 million. Anything else I got here? No, I don't see anything else here. So let's see what the relative volume was. Ooh, she dropped a lot, folks. She went from 378,000 shares 
down to 68,000 shares today. Ouch. Share structure. Well, let me see. Somebody just popped in here. Taylor. Hi, Taylor. She can bring herself in, I do believe. Um, where were we? Outstanding share count. We got 171 million restricted. That is what the insiders own. 6.5 million. We get all the rest. 165 million. Come on in, Taylor. Come on in. Market cap for the company, 28.7 million. And I think that pretty much covers it. We, we just covered their financials, didn't we? Yes, we did. So, oh, Taylor's gone. So, <laughs> she's teasing me. Women, you got to love them, right? So let's go check out IQST. Honestly, Taylor, better late than never. Are you watching? Get in here. We miss you. All right. No, we were there. Okay. I think she's watching. She's listening. All right. I questled. We are looking at a five-minute chart. Let's go back to our six-month, four-hour chart. And if my chart looks different than your charts do, folks, the reason is I am using the Heiken Ashi bar which shows you pressure. It shows you movement. You don't get that with your regular candles. There's a lot of bald spots. You see that? Watch me fill all that in again. Oh, see? You see it. It's It's got a stronger perimeter. You can actually see the chart easier. Plus, it shows you strength. When you're looking at triple zero stocks, it may be going up and down, up and down, up and down. It looks like it's doing nothing. You can see the nine-day SMA and the 20-day climbing through those. You can actually see that. So iQuest, ticker IQST, four-hour, six-month chart. We got a low back in June of uh, 8.2 cents. She broke through that 200 strong. She was here at about uh, 12 and a half cents and ran all the way up to 33 cents. From the breakout, you had about 250% gains. Easy. Then we had a letter M. I said this the other day. That is a perfect letter M. And on the tail of the M, you normally get a big fall. And that's what we had here. A W works exactly the opposite. You see a big W on the end of the tail, you normally get a big run. So she came down where to? Our 200, a flat 200. So she bounced off of that. And as you can see, I've got a channel here because she is in a downtrend right now and she is fighting it. Right now we are stuck in the center. After hitting the top, we've just been sliding down the center. And currently she is trying to get over it. We have gotten over all of our SMAs and are sitting perfectly on top of our 50-day SMA. We're here at uh, 16 cents. Our 200 is just a mere three cents away. I think she's probably going to make a move for it, folks. She was going sideways on this strong resistance support line for a while. She's on top of it now. The difference, she was underneath all of her SMAs here. Now she's on top of them all, except the 200, right, right. Oscillators are looking good. All of them are starting to climb. Our RSI is a bit planted, but all the rest are now starting to push up ever so lightly, but that's where it starts. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Downhill trend. You can see our 200. We're underneath it, running parallel. Hit a low bubble here, and she is starting to change her trend. Off of that low bubble, she came back up, crossed all of her SMAs, got over this bottom portion of the channel, and she is up here on top of the 200, which is completely, I'm going to get these lines out of the way. You can see she is right on top of that 200, which is at this very moment flat. She has just gotten there. In my opinion, this is one you watch to break out now. Is she going to dribble down? I don't think so, but anything is possible, of course. But we've got all of our SMAs pointed toward the 200, getting ready to give us those golden crosses, some extra strength. Oscillators are a bit weak on our one-hour chart. Looking at our five-day, five-minute, it's not looking bad. we got our low bubble in this corner of 13 cents, high bubble up here of 16 cents. She was under the 200, crossed the 200, 
across this resistance and she is climbing though she has dipped underneath the 50 and this is a bad dip here. She's come underneath the nine, dragged the nine underneath the 50. Now again, she looks like she's just dangling there in the air, doesn't she? It's like, oh, she's going to fall all the way to the 200. <laughs> well, that's what it looks like. So start looking. She's just underneath this. She could be fighting the 50 on the 15 minute. Let's see the 30 minute. Yeah, this one I could work with. She is floating up over the 50, fighting the 20. You see how you can get a lot of different perspectives. And it is the same chart, really. I mean, nothing different. We're just looking at different time spans. What makes each chart different is how many people are watching them. How many people are responding to that one minute SMA? How many are responding to the five minute SMA? And when you see a chart where the SMA is being respected, start using that chart predominantly. I'm not saying don't look at the others, but use the one that sees the most attention being given to the SMAs. All right, where are we at? 501. She's gone again. All right, I'm not going to make it to FDCT, doggone it. Maybe, maybe. My voice is going, folks. Let's take a look at Spoozy. I have been looking at Spoozy here the last couple of days because her chart is ripping. Oh, my God. Is this the one I think went 2,000% gains in the last couple of weeks or something? This is Spoozy. Spoozy is ticker SPZI. Finished the day at 0075, 41.5% gains today. On the pink tier and current, only got one of those green ticks. Verified profile. That's a good one. But we'd like to see a verified transfer agent. That's really important. Now, they tell us she's a shell risk. Maybe she is, maybe she isn't. We'll have to look at the numbers. This means that she's in business doing something, but she hasn't reported any revenues yet. So let's take a look at what's going here on by looking at the news first. That is all in December, every single piece of news. And let me see, back here. Wow. No, we're not going back there. That's February of 2022. So this is everything we have. Shareholder update. Maybe I got that one. Completes primary acquisitions and a change of control on the 20th of December. Then we have a shareholder letter here. We're going to take a look at that. He tells us, matter of fact, let's just jump into that. This is what the new CEO says. By now, you are aware that I recently became the chairman and the CEO of Spoo's. I am a 63-year-old Korean businessman and a U.S. citizen. Now, this, this is important here. I have shipped over 160 containers previously and com in commodities like sugar, chicken paws, and liquefied natural gas. Now, chicken paws, folks, I knew you'd ask. <laughs> you asked. The difference, chicken paws and chicken feet. This is a chicken foot. A chicken foot has part of the leg attached to it. A chicken paw just has the fingers. And would you believe that chicken paws are more popular than chicken feet? Who'd guessed? They tell us that my relationships include counterparties and investors from South Korea, Germany, China, Philippines, and Brazil, just to name a few. I chose to merge my commodities trading business into Spoo's. The previous transaction that was negotiated with Nate's Food, I didn't know they had one, fell apart at the last minute. The reasons are not important. I do not own any shares of Nate's and I wish them well in their endeavors. And let me see. Uh, there was something else I wanted to say here. Trade oh, right, right. The news. So he comes into control on the 20th. On the 21st, he gives us that letter. He says he has deals lined up. He wasn't BSing folks. On the 26th, just five days later, he cuts and executes. We're not talking about letters of intent or memorandums of understanding. He says he fully executed $53 million worth of contracts. But don't be impressed yet because three days later, he added $37 million more million to that, taking it up to $90 million. So, I mean, in less than two weeks, he has brought in $90 million into this company. And just so... He no, they are chicken feet. Um, 
I know they are. There they are. I just saw it there. He sold $36 million worth of grade A chicken paws. We don't need them here in America, do we? I've never seen them in the store. If I do, I probably turn my head because they don't look pretty. So that's what his business is. And his business is big. I mean, he's brought money into the company just like that. And that's what you want to see in a change of control. Let's see what our relative volume was for the company. She jumped a little bit, going from just under 100 million shares to 111 million shares. Share structure for Spoozy. Another company that is diluted to heck when it comes to authorized shares, right? They've got 5.5 billion. Look at how many they got on the market. 5.495. They either have to get more shares or they could do a reverse stock split. I don't like either one of those cases. But the fact of the matter is they need to have shares. If they run into any crisis, they can use these shares, as I said, for public offerings, but they also use the shares as currency, making deals with other companies. Sometimes they pay themselves or they use them as employee benefits. They got nothing to work with right now. We get out of that 5.4 billion, most of them. Insiders are going to take 347 million. We get 5.1 billion shares. Ow. Market cap, just over 29 million. Financials for Spoozy? Well, all those new numbers aren't going to be here, folks. And we know those numbers are there. Both of those contracts, he said, were fully executed. Quarterly, we got nothing. Nothing is here, folks. So all we've got are the news presses right now. And though I hate to say it, I'm saying it because it needs to be said. Anytime we're looking at a pink, Look at the management. Study the management first. What they've done in the past matters because people really don't change. And if they've got a, a trail of successes, a lot of experience, businesses, they've grown and sold, you've got a good man at the helm. But if you see a guy that's had companies fail over and over, has no education, has been in trouble before, been in front of the SEC, you should take it with a grain of salt. And I have not done any due diligence on this gentleman, so I don't know. However, in saying that, actions speak louder than words. The man's brought $90 million worth of contracts to the table, executed them in two weeks. I'm digging that. Uh, was there anything else we had here? I don't think so. There was just those two. Yes, sir. So let's jump on over to Spoozy. Uh, I copy better than I type. <laughs> I know me oh so well. So that is our 30 minute chart. Let's pull up. Well, let's just look at the uh, one year chart. Really isn't any need to look at the four hour chart, the 20 day chart, really. Because what has she been doing? Absolutely nothing. She was down here on the floor at 0001. Can't get any lower on the public market. And never, okay, right here, right here, she broke the 200 in a year. And this is November 28th when she finally snuck up over it. And then, then she snuck up over again and then took off. And what day is this? This is the 4th. Now, was there anything on the 4th on the news? I don't believe there was. This is the 8th. No. See here, we've got nothing there. Now, I want to look at disclosures. No. No. See, so somebody knew something here, right? Come on. This stock has been doing absolutely nothing for a full year and four days before the big change of control comes onto the picture. No filings, no press releases. We had no clue. Somebody did four days before. So she started running here from, <laughs> wow, triple zero two and she took off and we are now at double zero seven nine. Uh, that's five times seven, 35, 3,000. We're over 3,500% gains, folks, since the start of December, basically. She was climbing every single day, except one day she just balanced herself off, put a uh, what I like to think of as a pillar into the ground. You go through the strongest SMA that you're near, and you stuff that deep into the ground when you have plans of starting to climb. A stabilizer, right? Look, 
she put that in, she climbed. And once she put that in, she increased her velocity of growth. All of our SMAs are picture perfect. All of our oscillators are going to the moon. The one-year chart is super hot. Let's come on right down to, all right, let's take a 20-day. Perfect. Look at this. Triple zero one. Triple zero one, the floor. And we are now at double zero seven nine. And she has picked up momentum. She had gotten up onto this 50, did a rubber ball bounce, and then launched. And she has been pushing herself strong, folks. This really looks good. Our 200-day SMA is finally curving up and climbing. All of our SMAs, our osculators are on fire. And our, <laughs> our RSI has been in the overbought solid for three days. Hasn't even come out of it. Five-day, five-minute. Folks, it's a tsunami building up. She started building her wave right here. Tagged the beach, the sandbar, and that wave lifted. She is bouncing off of that 50 all the way to heaven, folks. This is what it looks like to me. Our volume is increasing. You can see that here. 200-day SMA is perfect. Oscillators, they're a little bit cool. I mean, they're going sideways. Uh, they are dipping just a little bit. But honestly, folks, the oscillators aren't showing any fall. They're just cool. So I, I like this chart. SPZI looks really good to me, folks. All right, it is 511. I've got one other stock here. I did put it up. It's only fair. Velmore, was this yours? Let me see if this was Velmore's. No, I'm sorry, hon. I tried. I dug deep. I really did. I don't know what's keeping you from getting here early. I'm sorry, but you do know I put up a placeholder about noon. You can get your ticker in early. You know, when, when you go to the toilet, just grab your phone, send me a ticker. I don't know what you're up to. All I see is the ticker. So let's take a look at that very last ticker, folks. This is FDCT. This is FDC Tech. Finished the day just under three cents at 2.77 cents. Dropped just under 7% at 6.1%. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. This is better. That's what they call it, the better tier, literally, because it's better than the pinks. The pinks don't give us any validated information. Here, you must have your financials audited. That gives us numbers that are validated. So we still need validated information. We get these down here, here too. So we're glad to see these here. Plus, once they start filing with audited financials, you start getting 8Ks, 6Ks. You get a lot more information from a QB. It makes them a better investment. So what is FDEC about? FDCT about? Well, they too are a fintech company. Our clients include regulated and OTC brokerages and prop and algo trading firms of all sizes in Forex, stocks, CFDs, commodities, indices, EFTs, precious metals, and other asset classes. So that's where their fintech is at. So what did I discover here? Do I got any notes here I can pump into very quickly? I do not. All right, the news is always a good place to start. I have gone all the way back here to April. The company amends the date of the acquisition of its majority controlling position in New Star Capital Trading LTD and its subsidiary. Now, did I bring this one up? STD subsidiary. No, I didn't, but there was something, there was something there I wanted to say about this and I thought I'd remember it and I'm not remembering it. Right, I remember it now, I saw the word. This company that they made a deal with has got a lot of different licenses so that this company is going to be able to start offering their services in a lot of different countries. Oh, I took away my highlights. That's okay. Let's see what we got here. Uh, that's 2023. They highlighted record revenues and gross margins. The company signs a binding letter of intent to merge with Alchemy Group. Signs the letter to merge with Alchemy Group and then provides updates on the definitive agreement for the acquisition. Oh, I thought you signed it back here. So it should be done. So let's see what we've got here in the news. 
The company provides updates on the definitive agreement of the acquisition of Alchemy companies and their direct investments. Well, let's see. Uh, the company will receive $2.5 million in direct investment from Alchemy Prime Holdings. This is going to be for their Series A preferred stock. They're also going to receive $5.5 million worth of investment into the regular shares. And this is cool. They're buying these at 11 cents a share and they're buying them on the open market. As you can see, our current price is under three cents right now. Now, when they're going to buy them, how they're going to buy them, I don't know. But they are buying them off the open market at 11 cents. How do you do that? If I wanted to buy shares at 11 cents on the open market, I put in a buy for 11. It's going to give them to me for the best buy price there is. It won't let me force the price up like that. So that, that'll be interesting to see. All right, so I guess that was the only uh, totaling 50 million shares. That's how many they're going to buy. What was the other piece of news I got here? We've got some forms, Form 4 and an S8. So let's see what these guys say. Um, oh, geez, this highlight went away. Let's see. We got, nope, just one there. Let's see. This is sales registered state form. Oh, this is about the shares. This is the 50 million shares. It is, I don't know why I duplicated that. My bad. And we've got a form four here. Remember, these are whenever the insiders acquire or buy shares. Well, acquire or dispose. Can be done in a lot of ways, but this is a purchase. We got one on the two on the 12th. One for uh, 2.75 cents, 20,000 shares. And then 30,000 more shares at three cents. This was Mitchell. This is a officer, director, and a 10% owner that just made two purchases in one day. And I do believe that's everything to look at except the regular information. We did have an increase in our volume today. Went from 316,000 to 559. It's not huge, but it's better than falling. Share structure. Outstanding share count, 333 million. Insiders own a ton of them. Ooh, they got 303 million. That's a lot. 10 times more than we get. We only get 30 million. And I'm not complaining. 30 million is great. It's not a super low float, but that's a decent share count. Market cap for the company, we're at 9.8 million. Taking a look at the financials. Explosion. They were doing about 400, about a half a million for the last three years. Now we're doing six and a half million. Problem is they're only bringing home one million out of that, but at least they're bringing home profit, right? Quarterlies, oh, they're growing even bigger. So what did we have last year? We had six million. So looking at the last four quarters, uh, two, three, four, five, oh, eight, eight and a half. We are at eight. Closing on $9 million for the last four quarters. And obviously, the last quarter was their biggest, jumping up to $3.6 million when they were doing just over $1.5 million. They doubled it. And they really increased their profit margins. Look, from 17 to 36 is just a little over double. Well, that should have been like 884000 No. Now we've got profits of $2.3 million. That's the increase I like to see. Balance sheet for this company. Cash in the bank, about $1.2 million. Total assets, I got to quit highlighting them. Total assets, $8.5 million. Total liabilities is down, $5.1. That gives us total stockholder equity of $3.4 million. This isn't a bad company to be in. And I do believe that covers everything except the chart. So let me copy and paste our way over to Think or Swim. Ding. Yes. All right. Let's back this out to the long chart. Ooh, flat. Has she been flat for a year? Yes. She had a poke back. <laughs> I'd have been watching this for a long time. There's our directional intentional spike going all the way up to the 200 and through it and coming down no lower than where she started from. Let's watch this for a breakout. <laughs> we have been watching for a very long time. Even when she got close right here, right? Perfect opportunity. That was in August. She missed it. 
She passed on it. She didn't miss it. She rejected it, pushed herself down further. So over the uh, year, her 52-week low is 0054. She hit that at the end of October, and we hit our high uh, halfway through December of five and a half cents. It's coming down to that four-hour view. Yeah, it's coming down to, well, yeah, maybe we better stick here first. So as you can see, she was doing nothing. She hit this low bubble. I wasn't expecting much, but she decided to change her trend from a nothing trend to a climbing trend. She got up over to 50 bed here, dipped like a crouch before the pounce, like a cat does, it crouches down before it jumps higher. She got up higher, crouched, and then jumped, got over that 200, stayed up there for just a couple of days, pushed herself up. She stayed up here, and now she's working her way up, bouncing in this channel. We had a nice jump here, going from about uh, 1.3 cents up to that 5.5 cents. You're looking at 200% uh, gains there, roughly, just under. She came back down to the 200, breaking out of that channel, bouncing off of that, back into the channel, and where is she bouncing now? Now she's already paid her homage to the 200. She's gone back into the channel, and she's paid her homage to the channel, and she is now bouncing up. And she is sitting on the 200 hall, which is a good place to be sitting. Our oscillators, eh, they're pretty much going sideways right now. All of them except our RSI, which is actually climbing right now. She's come from 46 up to 51. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So it's pretty much what we expect, except all of it, as you can see, has been over the 200, except our rubber ball bounce right there coming down quick and bouncing out of the water, back up, getting right up on top of that 50, and you can see she's laying on it now. This has become home. She's not going anywhere. She dipped to pay homage, but she's not going anywhere except probably ready to climb right now. Everything looks like it's turning right at this very moment. <laughs> Our oscillators are still going sideways. Not a whole lot of activity there. Five day, five minute. So we got a low back here of uh, 1.3 cents. She was underneath every single SMA, crossed her 20, crossed her 50. And notice each time she crosses one of these SMAs, her bars, her price bars start getting bigger. That's excitement. She got up here on top of this part of the channel, which I do believe is the center. Yes. No, that's the bottom part of the channel. She's in the bottom part, bouncing on that. Once she gets secure, she starts working her way up to the center of the channel. Now, here is our 200, just came into the picture, so I expected the price to gravitate to it. It did. It went to it, suckled right up to it, broke out, gave us a high bubble. She's come back down. She's bounced off for 50, and now she's going sideways. But everything looks like it's slowly and tediously working her way up. So she has something going on for her here. The charts we've been looking at all have a little bit of heat to them right now. And in this market, the bottom line is we need volume. Catalysts are great, but without the volume to put that catalyst into gear, you just don't get the results that you want. Well, I do believe, except <clears throat> except for Velmore's, we covered everybody's. My sincere apologies, Velmore. Honestly, you know I hate to do that to you. But we are here at 523, and I appreciate you guys hanging with me all this time. I know some of you left. That's okay. <laughs> and for putting up with me. That's a long time to put up with me. That's a long video. Taylor, we missed you, hon. I hope you're doing okay. Well, folks, we are out of time. We will be back next week. I think it'll be we. Normally, it's we. Thursdays, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I'm John Zadar, and you are watching On Top and Hot, brought to you by Penny Boys. Who said that? Thank you, Richard. I appreciate you, too. We'll see you next week, folks. I know. I'm going to do it. <laughs>